in the last lecture what we had uh, actually seen is uh, we had uh, x bar the sample mean vector to be an unbiased estimator of the population mean vector mu the covariance matrix the sample variance covariance matrix either s n or s n minus 1 both of them are uh, sufficient although they are sufficient statistic, but uh, only one of them s n minus 1 that is the sample variance covariance matrix with a divisor n minus 1 is the unbiased estimator of sigma the population variance covariance matrix. X bar of course, is uh, an unbiased estimator and also the sufficient statistic corresponding to mu only under the situation that sigma is known. We had also proved that uh, x bar and s is jointly sufficient for mu and sigma and the other cases when uh, say mu is known to be mu naught and all we had seen that. We had also derived the maximum likelihood estimators of the respective parameters associated with the multivariate normal distribution. Uh, um, say x bar the sample mean vector was the maximum likelihood estimator of the population mean vector mu and S n the sample variance covariance matrix with a divisor n was shown to be the maximum likelihood estimator of the population variance covariance matrix sigma under the multivariate normality setup. So, what we will look at today is uh, basically the distribution of these statistic that we had discussed in the last lecture. So, we will be looking at the distribution of the associated statistic in this lecture. So, distribution of x bar the sample mean random variable vector and s with let us say divisor n minus 1. The distribution of s n would also follow in a similar manner. So, first let us concentrate on looking at what is the distribution of this x bar random vector. Now, x bar random vector it is based on a random sample of size n. So, that is given by 1 upon n summation x i. This summation is from 1 to up to n. Now, what are these x i components? x i components are basically the n random samples that are observed. So, this x 1, x 2, x n is a random sample from a multivariate normal distribution p dimensional with the mean vector mu and a covariance matrix as sigma, sigma is positive definite. So, under such a situation what is the distribution of this x bar the sample mean random vector. See what we have already obtained is the following that expectation of x bar is mu that is this is an unbiased estimator of mu and we had also derived the following that the covariance matrix of this x bar the sample mean random vector irrespective of of course, uh, multivariate normality on the underlying distribution is sigma by n. Right. Now, in order to see what exactly is the distribution of this x bar random vector, uh, we will look at the definition of multivariate normal distribution. So, this is a p dimensional vector here. So, for every alpha vector belonging to r to the power p let us see what is the distribution of this alpha prime x bar and what can we say about this alpha prime x bar quantity. So, this alpha prime x bar is nothing but alpha prime 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n x i quantities. So, we can write this as 1 upon n outside and inside the summation what we have is this summation i equal to 1 to n alpha prime x i right. Now, each of these x i's inside this summation which contains n terms are multivariate normal. So, x 1, x 2, x n all of them being a random sample from this n p mu sigma has the following properties that each of these are multivariate normal n p mu sigma and they are independent. So, what we can say is that for every i equal to 1 to up to n this alpha prime x i linear combination is going to follow an n 1 distribution. Why? This is because each of these x i follow a multivariate normal 
p dimension with mean vector mu and the covariance matrix sigma right. So, hence these basically are n 1 random variables and furthermore because x 1 x 2 x n is a random sample these x 1 x 2 x n are independent and this alpha prime x 1 alpha prime x n are independent. This is because x 1 x 2 x n are independent. So, if we denote this y i equal to alpha prime x i these are following n 1 distribution and all of them are independent they are actually in, uh, identical also. So, it is basically an i i d setup this is true for every i equal to 1 to up to n. So, what does that imply if we have these alpha prime x i s which we have denoted by y i. So, this term alpha prime x bar is nothing but 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n y i where each of these y i s are n 1 independently distributed. So, this is what this is just the sum of n independent normal distributions. So, this would imply let us give this equation number 1. So, this implies from 1 and the discussion that we had about the, the each of these alpha prime x i s this would imply that this alpha prime x bar which is 1 upon n summation of these y i quantities each of them are normally distributed random variables and y 1, y 2, y n are independent. So, this would imply that this is going to have an n 1 distribution an univariate normal distribution. This is going to be true for every alpha belonging to r to the power p where of course, alpha is not a null vector. So, what what have we proved? We have proved that for every alpha belonging to r to the power p this alpha prime x bar has got an n 1 distribution. So, that would imply that the distribution of x bar is multivariate normal because that is what is the definition of a multivariate normal distribution. So, this would imply that this x bar the sample mean random vector this follows a multivariate normal p dimension with the mean vector as mu and a covariance matrix as sigma by n right. So, this is the desired distribution of the sample mean random vector which is p dimension derived from the set of random samples x 1, x 2, x n right. This is relatively simple what is new actually is the distribution of s n minus 1 say. Now, s n minus 1 is given by 1 upon n minus 1 summation i equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar into x i minus x bar transpose. Now, this s is said to have a Wishart distribution which is a new distribution of course, we are going to talk uh, about what is a Wishart distribution its properties and how this Wishart distribution is going to be derived. Let me first just state the result this n minus 1 s n minus 1 this is summation x i minus x bar into x i minus x bar transpose is said to follow a p this is dimension is p that is right. So, it is said to follow a p dimensional Wishart distribution with parameters n minus 1 and sigma. We write it in the following way that this n minus 1 as n minus 1 this follows a Wishart distribution p dimensional with parameters n minus 1 and sigma. So, this is how a Wishart distribution anyway is written right. Now, this of course, we are going to prove that uh, this particular quantity n minus 1 s n minus 1 which is the sum of squares and cross products matrix the random matrix 
has really got a v short distribution on the degrees of freedom n minus 1 and the associated covariance matrix sigma as claimed in this particular statement. We are of course, going to prove it and uh, we also make a note of this particular fact which we also will be proving that the two statistic furthermore this x bar and s n minus 1 are independently distributed. So, these are the two important things about the distribution of uh, the sample variance covariance matrix S n minus 1 with the divisor n minus 1 which also happens to be the unbiased estimator and uh, this x bar and S n minus 1 are going to be independently distributed. Right? So, of course, in order to derive this particular result that uh, this has this really has got a Wishart distribution and these are independent we would have to talk about what Wishart distribution actually is and uh, its properties and we actually move on to that. Let us try to see uh, this result basically is uh, the result which uh, talks about the sample variance covariance matrix from a multivariate normal distribution and then uh, the distribution of the associated uh, statistic x bar and s n minus 1. And let us try to also tally these results with uh, the type of results that we usually have in case of univariate normal setup. What is the result that we have for the univariate normal setup? If we have x 1, x 2, x n uh, random sample from an univariate normal distribution with mean as mu and variance as sigma square, then x bar has got a normal distribution with mean as mu and variance as sigma square by n. What we have here? We have for the multivariate setup a result which is similar to that particular univariate result. Now, the mean there for the univariate normal which uh, was mu was equal to the mean of the associated distribution and the variance of that distribution in case of univariate normal was sigma square by n. What we have here in the multivariate setup is sigma matrix divided by n. So, it is it's a result which is similar in nature to that particular result. And what is the result that we have for the univariate normal uh, set up when we talk about estimation of sigma square quantity. Well, if we had in such a situation S n minus 1 defined as 1 upon n minus 1 summation x i minus x bar whole square, then the univariate distribution theory tells us that n minus 1 is a square by sigma square that follows a chi square distribution on n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Right? So, that type of result basically is going to be generalized here in terms of a, a Wishart distribution which is distribution corresponding to a random matrix because this n minus 1 s n minus 1 which is given by this is a random matrix. So, we cannot talk about its distribution being a chi square random variable because that is basically distribution of a an univariate random variable. So, we basically are generalizing that chi square distribution to multivariate setup and we are what we are getting is a Wishart distribution. So, the result is similar in nature to that and this Wishart distribution in that sense is basically the generalization of the chi square distribution in the multivariate setup. Right? So, let us first define what is a Wishart distribution and how we are going to have a Wishart distribution. Let us talk something about a Wishart distribution. Let us first give the definition. Let y1, y2, ym be independent multivariate normal. Let me not use a notation m here, let me use a notation n here. So, y1, y2, yn suppose is our independent normal m dimension with a mean vector as null vector and a covariance matrix as sigma matrix. Then the following quantity A which is summation i equal to 1 to up to n y i y i transpose is said 
to have a Wishart distribution, which is going to be of the dimension of the order of this particular matrix, which is m, because we have each of these multivariate normals as m dimensional. So, y i y i transpose is going to be an m by m random matrix. So, this is an m dimensional Wishart distribution with parameters m and sigma. We write it as a following a Wishart distribution with parameters this is not m this is with parameter n and sigma this n is associated with the number of normal random vectors that is what we have y 1 y 2 y n. So, this on m dimension with parameters n and sigma. So, this sigma thus is associated with the variance covariance matrix of the constituent multivariate normal distributions and n is also referred to as the degrees of freedom corresponding to such a Wishart random matrix. Degrees of freedom in the sense that we have y 1, y 2, y n being independent multivariate normal with the mean vector 0 and the covariance matrix sigma. Note that each of them has got the same covariance matrix sigma and in such a situation if we look at the sum of these random matrices y 1, y 1 transpose is a random matrix, y 2, y 2 transpose is another random matrix. So, y n, y n transpose is another random matrix all of them are going to be independent. So, we have the summation of n such independent random matrices and that is what is going to give us this degrees of freedom n here and we read it in the following way that a follows a Wishart distribution with uh, on m dimension with n degrees of freedom and with an associated variance covariance matrix as sigma. Right? Now, I say that this Wishart distribution is a multivariate generalization Wishart distribution is the multivariate generalization of a chi square distribution. Why is that? Because suppose you consider the univariate setup. In the univariate setup, we will say that y 1, y 2, y n are univariate random variables independent each having an univariate normal distribution with mean 0 and a variance equal to sigma square. Then if we look at summation y i square in the case of univariate distribution this y i y i transpose both of them are univariate random variables. So, they have one component. So, y i y i prime in such a situation will be just be y i square. So, if we have y 1 y 2 y n univariate random variables independent normal 0 sigma square then summation y i square will have what a sigma square chi square on the degrees of freedom which would be actually the number of independent random variables in that particular summation of whose squares we are looking at. So, that in such a situation summation i equal to 1 to n y i square will have a sigma square chi square distribution on n degrees of freedom. So, it is in uh, this way similar to that of a chi square distribution where we are now looking at not y i squares, but we have multivariate random vectors y 1, y 2, y n and we are looking at y i, y i transpose and thus this is now having a distribution which is the distribution of a random matrix which is a Wishart distribution. This m if we had an univariate distribution then this m would have been 1. This n was the degrees of freedom of a chi square distribution. Now, this is the degrees of freedom associated with a Wishart distribution and with the same sigma square of course, we will be requiring that and hence this is the associated variance covariance matrix. Now, two simple results concerning a Wishart distribution are the following two results. Suppose we have it is a result concerning the sum of two independent Wishart distributions. So, suppose a 1 follows a Wishart distribution m dimension with n 1 degrees of freedom and an associated variance covariance matrix sigma and we have another Wishart distribution 
with the same dimension m a different degrees of freedom n 2 and the same associated variance covariance matrix. Suppose, we have a 1 following a v shot this and a 2 following a v shot n 2 sigma and are independent. Then, the sum of the two Wishart distributions, which is another random matrix. So, this a 1 plus a 2, which is the sum of the two Wishart distributions, will also follow a Wishart distribution with the same dimensionality, the degrees of freedom n 1 plus n 2 and the same associated variance covariance matrix. So, this random matrix a 1 plus a 2 thus also has a Wishart distribution. Once again, one would uh, recall that such a similar result holds for a chi square distribution, which comes from random sampling from an univariate normal distribution. Now, how to prove this particular result? Now, this result can be proved in various ways using uh, distribution uh, using probability density function, the joint probability density function of Wishart distribution, using characteristic function of Wishart distribution, what we will look at, because we have not yet looked at what are, uh, what is the characteristic function of Wishart distribution etcetera. So, what we will do is to just use the definition of Wishart distribution in order to prove the additive property of this Wishart distribution. Now, this A follows A 1 follows Wishart m n 1 sigma. Now, from the definition what we can say is that A 1 thus can be written as summation i equal to 1 to up to n 1, because it is on n 1 degrees of freedom. So, there are n 1 such random vectors y i s. So, this is y i, y i transpose, where each of these y i s follow a multivariate normal with the dimensionality as the dimensionality of the Wishart and a mean vector as a null vector and a covariance matrix as the covariance matrix associated with the Wishart which is n 1 and this y 1, y 2, y n are independent. So, that is what is the definition of the Wishart distribution. Similarly, if we look at a 2, we have a 2 to follow a Wishart distribution m n 2 sigma. So, this would imply that a 2 is of the form that it is summation i equal to 1 to up to n 2 of z i z i transpose, where each of these z i's follow a multivariate normal m null and the same covariance matrix and sigma with this z 1, z 2, z n 2 being independent. Right. So, that is the definition of the Wishart distribution once again. So, we will have a 2 to have uh, this form, where the component z i's they have a multivariate normal with mean vector 0 and a covariance matrix sigma and this z 1, z 2, z n are independently distributed. Now, we are given that this a 1 and a 2 are independent. So, this would imply that this set y 1, y 2, y n is independent of this set, which is this is y 1, y 2, y n 1 and this is independent of the other set of random variables, which make up this a 2. Why is this? Because a 1 is given through this y 1, y 2, y n 1, n 1 of these random vectors and a 2 is given by this set of random vectors z 1, z 2, z n 2 and since a 1 and a 2 are independent, this set of multivariate random vectors is independent of the other set of random vectors this z 1, z 2, z n 2. Now, we redefine these quantities say I uh, redefine this as y n 1 plus 1. So, no problem in redefining that I will call z 1 to be y n 1 plus 1, z 2 to be y n 1 plus 2 and 
this z n 2 to be y n 1 plus n 2. So, we are just making this y 1 y 2 y n 1 and this z z 1 z 2 z uh, z 1 z 2 z n 2 as y n 1 plus 1 up to y n 1 plus 2. So, if we under such a situation consider what is this a 1 plus a 2. Now, a 1 plus a 2 from the definition of these Wishart distributions was i equal to 1 to n 1 y i y i transpose and a 2 in terms of z first is i equal to 1 to n 2 z i z i transpose right. So, we have redefined them in terms of y i's. So, what we can write is this is i equal to 1 to n 1 y i y i transpose this plus summation i equal to n 1 plus 1 to n 1 plus n 2 of y i y i transpose. So, this is written in terms of a single summation as i equal to 1 to n 1 plus n 2 y i y i transpose, where the characteristics of these elements which are there in this summation of order n 1 plus n 2, where these y i's follows a multivariate normal m dimension with a mean vector as null vector and a covariance matrix as sigma and y 1, y 2, y n 1 plus n 2 are independent. So, we have this particular random matrix summation of n 1 plus n 2 random matrices, where each of the constituent vectors y i is now have got multivariate normal 0 sigma and they are all independent. So, from the definition of the Wishart distribution, which we had stated in the last slide here, that if this is the setup that they are independent multivariate normal then this quantity will have a Wishart distribution with the associated parameters. So, thus this quantity here what we have is summation of such quantities which are there in the definition of the Wishart distribution. So, this would imply that a 1 plus a 2 will follow a Wishart distribution m dimension with parameter as n 1 plus n 2 the degrees of freedom of the Wishart distribution and the associated variance covariance matrix as sigma right. So, this proves this result. Now, let us look at another simple fundamental result about Wishart distribution. Suppose, we have A to follow a Wishart distribution Wishart m n sigma, sigma is positive definite we will not uh, write it again and again it is implied that we are not uh, dealing with a singular sigma matrix, we will always be looking at uh, sigma to be positive definite. So, suppose we have a following such a Wishart distribution and let C uh, be a Q by M non random matrix Once we say that A has got a Wishart distribution m n sigma, this is this A has this is a random matrix which is of the order m by m. So, it is a square matrix and this C B A Q by m non random matrix of constants uh, essentially. Then C A C prime will also have a Wishart distribution. Now, this C A C prime is going to be a random matrix because A is a random matrix of order m by m. So, the order of this C A C prime is q by q. So, this is a q by q random matrix this would have a Wishart distribution q dimension on the same degrees of freedom as the degrees of freedom of the underlying Wishart distribution which is n and then associated variance covariance matrix now as C sigma C prime right. This also is a very fundamental result. Once again we will look at proving this particular result without using any further properties of Wishart distribution like its uh, PDF or its characteristic function. What we will simply be using is the definition once again of the Wishart distribution. 
So, what do we have? We have A following a Wishart distribution, Wishart M n sigma that is from the definition of Wishart distribution A is given by the following that it is summation i equal to 1 to n y i y i transpose where y 1, y 2, y n are independent identically distributed multivariate normal m dimension with a mean vector as null vector and a covariance matrix as a sigma matrix right so that is the definition. So, if we now look at the quantity whose distribution is desired to be obtained. So, this would imply that C A C prime is C A is summation i equal to 1 to n y i y i transpose times C transpose. So, we pre multiply this summation with C and post multiply with C prime. So, what we have is the following that this is i equal to 1 to n C y i and this is y i transpose C transpose. So, this one can write as summation i equal to 1 to n let me just write it as C y i and this can be written as C y i transpose. Right. Now, what let us write this as in a new notation z i z i transpose where this z i is a new random vector which is c times this y i random vector. Now, what is the uh, what is that special about this z i quantities? So, this z i which is c times y i c is a non random matrix from the properties of a multivariate normal distribution. What is the distribution of this z i which is c times y i? Now, c is a q by m matrix this y is m by 1 vector. So, this is going to have a multivariate normal distribution q dimension with the mean vector the previous mean vector of y i was null and hence this also remains null and then the covariance matrix of C y i is C covariance matrix of y i times C prime. So, this is C sigma C prime. Now, what we had about y i's was that y 1, y 2, y n were independent random vectors and so will be z 1, z 2, z n because z i vectors are derived from these y i vectors. So, what we also have this is for every i equal to 1 to up to n and z 1, z 2, z n are independent. So, what is that we have this C A C prime this would imply that C A C prime which is nothing, but written in terms of these multivariate normal distributions i equal to 1 to n z i z i prime. Now, these z i quantities are random vectors which are independent normally distributed which this with this as the mean vector and c sigma c prime as its associated covariance matrix. So, that would imply that this quantity is going to follow a Wishart distribution with what dimension with the dimension of this random matrix which is q by q and hence this is a Wishart q on what degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is the number of independent random vectors here which is n. So, this has a degrees of freedom as n and the associated covariance matrix of the Wishart distribution is the covariance matrix associated with the constituent multivariate normal distribution covariance matrices. So, that is C sigma C prime. So, this proves this previous result which we had stated here that if A is a Wishart distribution and Q is a non random matrix then C A C prime has also got this particular Wishart distribution on this uh, n as the degrees of freedom and C sigma C prime as its associated covariance matrix right. Now, before we proceed further uh, we will be requiring some uh, elementary concepts on Kronecker product. So, we will just state these results it is uh, we will not be proving any of these results I will just state these results because uh, these Kronecker product results would be used heavily uh, in further uh, improving further properties of uh, Wishart distribution and as also 
when we try to prove uh, the quantity of interest which we had stated that the distribution of x bar was mu, uh, the distribution of n minus 1 s was Wishart and x bar and n minus 1 s or x bar and s are independently distributed. So, in order to prove that we would be requiring uh, these results concerning the Kronecker product. Let me just introduce what, uh, what is a Kronecker product and what are the results that we are going to state here some results on Kronecker product of matrices. So, suppose we have A an M by N matrix comprising of elements A i j and let us have B to be P by Q matrix of elements B i j, then A Kronecker product, this is the sign for the Kronecker product, I will be using this sign for Kronecker product henceforth. So, A Kronecker product B, this is M by N matrix, this is P by Q matrix. So, this is going to be given by the following matrix, which is A 1 1, which is a scalar quantity that multiplied by B, A 1 2 multiplied by the B matrix, A 1 N multiplied by this B matrix and that is all the elements of A are in turn multiplied by the same B matrix. So, this is A M 1 that multiplied by the B matrix, A M 2 multiplied by the B matrix and this is A m n multiplied by this B matrix. So, this is how we define a Kronecker product between two matrices A and B. Now, what is the dimension of this particular matrix? If you look at what is happening when we are looking at the Kronecker product of A with Kronecker product of uh, uh, A with the Kronecker product B, then what is happening is that each of these, each of these are matrices which is of the order P by Q. So, we have P by Q matrix here 1 first, second and n such p by q matrices uh, augmented one after the other. So, the dimension of this particular A Kronecker product B matrix which is given on the right hand side is going to be m p times m q. So, this is what we are going to have if we look at the Kronecker product of A and B. So, given this A B two matrices, this is how the Kronecker product is defined. Now, I am going to state these results. The first that I will write is for constants, for scalar constants alpha and beta say and A and B two matrices as we had defined this alpha A Kronecker product beta B is going to be given by alpha beta times A Kronecker product B. So, if we have two constants, scalar constants alpha and beta, alpha being multiplied with A and then it, the Kronecker product is taken with the matrix beta multi, uh, B multiplied by the beta scalar constant, then that is this quantity. Let A and B be two matrices P by Q and let me have C as R by S, then this A plus B, this is just the sum of the two matrices, Kronecker product this matrix C is nothing but A Kronecker product C plus B Kronecker product C. Now, the third result that we might be requiring is that suppose we have A, B, C three matrices such that the following multiplications are possible. So, if we have A Kronecker product B matrix being multiplied in the in the terms of Kronecker product with another matrix C, then what we can say that this is equivalent to A Kronecker product of B Kronecker product C. Now, the fourth result is what if we have A Kronecker product B, the matrix is transpose, 
then that would be given by A transpose Kronecker product B transpose. We have also the following result for the trace of two Kronecker product uh, of the Kronecker product of two matrices. So, if we look at trace of A Kronecker product B matrix, this is all these results are elementary and simple to prove also. So, that will be trace of A times this is a scalar quantity times the trace of B matrix. The result concerning the inverse of Kronecker product of two matrices is the following that suppose we have A Kronecker product B inverse of that being taken. Now, when we talk about this inverse, this is going to be A inverse Kronecker product B inverse. Here of course, A is not P by Q or B is not M by N. Both this A and B are square matrices, square matrices which are non-singular and hence we will assume that in such a situation when we are looking at A Kronecker product B inverse to be written as A inverse Kronecker product B inverse, then both this A and B matrices are non-singular. Uh, we will also be requiring this result here that suppose A is P by P and B is say Q by Q, then we will have the determinant of A Kronecker product B to be given by. So, this is say P by P and this is say Q by Q. So, this would be given by determinant of A raised to the power order of the B matrix this multiplied by the determinant of B raised to the power of the order of the A matrix. So, this is this P. Okay. Now, if we move on to stating three more results. So, this number 8 would be suppose this A P by P suppose for P by P A and B say Q by Q, we have the eigenvalues of A as A 1, A 2, A P and the eigenvalues of B as B 1, B 2, B q. So, this a 1, a 2, a p are the eigenvalues of the a matrix and b 1, b 2, b q are the eigenvalues of this b matrix. Then the eigenvalues of a Kronecker product b matrix. Now, what is the order of this a Kronecker product b matrix? The order of this a Kronecker product b matrix would be p q rows and p q columns. So, we will have P Q eigenvalues of this A Kronecker product B matrix and these are basically given by then the eigenvalues of these are A i times B j i equal to 1 to up to P and j equal to 1 to up to Q. So, these A i B j's are A i times B j's. So, these are going to be the eigenvalues that are associated with A Kronecker product B matrix. There are P Q of those eigenvalues here. Now, note that if we have A to be positive definite, B to be positive definite and so will be A Kronecker product B matrix because each of these eigenvalues if A is positive definite are greater than 0 and if B is positive definite we will have all these to be also positive uh, to be greater than 0 b 1 b 2 b q and hence these product a i times b j's which are associated with the eigenvalues of a Kronecker product b matrix those are also going to be greater than 0 strictly. Now, if we have 1 to be positive definite 1 to be positive semi definite what is going to happen to a Kronecker product b if a is positive definite all these a i's are greater than 0. A is positive semi definite. So, this B j is are greater than or equal to 0. So, we can at the most say that A i times B j are all greater than or equal to 0 and hence the A Kronecker product B matrix would in a such a situation 
be positive semi definite. So, that is what uh, if A is positive definite and B is positive definite, then A Kronecker product B is also positive definite. Now, the last result that we will be stating for this Kronecker product of matrices is the following, but before that we need to define a VEC operation. What is that? So, definition of a VEC operation. First, we will define this and then in terms of this VEC operation, we will have the last result in this section uh, being stated. So, suppose we have we have a matrix T, say I take that to be of order m by p, which is comprising of these column vectors t 1, t 2, uh, this is p. So, this is t p. So, each of these are m by 1 column vectors. So, we have this matrix T, which has m rows corresponding to the dimension of each of these T i vectors. Then, this vec of this T matrix is given by the following that we stack up all these columns one below the other so what we have done in this vec operation is the following that we had this T matrix to be comprising of P m dimensional column vectors so what we have done in the vec is the first m components. So, this is an m by 1 component and so will be this t 1, this is the second stacking here, which is also m by 1, then the third t 3 would be coming. So, we place t 1 at the top, then t 2, t 3 and like that. So, we make a column vector from this particular m by p matrix and this thus would be a column vector of the order m p by 1. So, we will have all these being stacked one over the other and thus giving us this vec of this particular T matrix. Now, this is particular, this would be particularly useful, useful when we are uh, immediately going to define what is a matrix normal distribution, we will use this heavily. Now, if this is a vec operation, then the following result concerning the Kronecker products also hold true. Suppose, we have let me not put any restriction on these uh, matrices. We will have a trace of the following quantity where this is B x transpose C x D. Then trace of this quantity is going to be given by vec of x transpose times B transpose multiplied by this D transpose Kronecker product this C matrix that multiplied by this vec of x. Right. So, this is what uh, is going to happen if now this B x transpose C x also and D are matrices such that this multiplication because this is just matrix multiplication operation they are defined. So, as long as they are defined for any such B x C and D matrices this result will, would hold true that such the trace of this can be written in terms of this. Now, with this particular uh, uh, introduction about Kronecker products, let us look at uh, the definition of matrix normal distribution and how we can define uh, Wishart distribution that we have defined through multivariate normal random vectors. Uh, that also can be defined through a matrix normal distribution and then of course, uh, I will show that the two definitions of Wishart distribution are equivalent. Why this is required? This is basically required in order to prove the result which we are we have stated uh, some time back that x bar and s are independent and the distribution of s is Wishart distribution n minus 1 s is Wishart. We will be using the definition of a matrix normal distribution in such a situation. So, let us first define a matrix normal distribution. Suppose, we have y be an r by s random matrix.
and m b an r by s matrix of constants and c and d let us make c to be r by r and d to be s by s b 2 positive definite matrix b 2 positive definite matrices then uh, they of course are positive definite matrices of constants. So, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 such matrices now y is an r by s random matrix, m is r by s, s matrix of constants, c and d are also two non random matrices, matrices of constants. This is r by r and d is s by s. These two matrices c and d are positive definite matrices, m may or may not, uh, we are not actually concerned about uh, any special property about this m matrix, it is a rectangular matrix. It is importantly of that same dimension as that of this particular matrix. Under such a setup, this random matrix is said to have a matrix normal distribution. I just write it as n, but this should be read as a matrix normal because this y is a matrix of cons uh, matrix r by s matrix. So, it is a random matrix and hence uh, the we have this being defined as n m this is that matrix and c Kronecker product d if so i will just write it in bracket how we read it y follows a matrix normal distribution with parameters m and c Kronecker product d, we will know what these parameters actually represent for the case of this matrix normal distribution. Once we give the definition of this matrix normal distribution, then y will follow a matrix normal distribution this, if vec of y prime follows a multivariate normal of dimension r times s with a mean vector as vec of m prime and a covariance matrix which is c Kronecker product d. So, this what gives us the definition of a matrix normal distribution. Y is said to have a mat matrix normal distribution with a matrix m as one set of parameters and C Kronecker product D as the other set of parameters. If we have vec of y prime, now what is the dimension of vec of y prime? y is r by s. So, we can think that y is comprising of s column vectors each of dimension r. So, if we make vec of y prime from there, then it is going to lead us to an r by s random vector and that is what is going to have a multivariate normal distribution R s dimension with vec of m prime which is going to have the same dimension as vec of y prime which is R s as its mean vector and C Kronecker product d as its associated covariance matrix. Now, for example, suppose we have y 1, y 2, y n each of them following a multivariate normal m dimension with a mean vector 0 and a covariance matrix as sigma matrix. Then let us define y matrix to be the following y 1 prime, y 2 prime, y n prime. So, this is going to be a matrix. Now, each of these are m by 1 vectors. So, this is a row vector of how many columns m. So, this is going to be an n by m matrix. Now, from here if we look at what is y prime, y prime is going to be y 1, 
y 2 y n right. So, if we look at now vec of y prime and let us see what is the distribution of that. Now, y note what note that this y is a random matrix because it is comprising of these rows each of these are random variables uh, random vectors rather. Now, vec of y prime is thus going to be a column vector how is that going to be formed the first set of entries is going to be this y 1 which is m dimensional the second set of entries would be this y 2. So, we are stacking one vector <coughs> after the other and this is going to be this y n right. So, this is this vec of y prime is going to be m n cross one dimensional random vector. Now, what is the distribution of this? You uh, we have taken actually this each of these y i's to be this and they are independent say. So, suppose I take y 1 y 2 y n multi uh, multivariate normal m dimensional with a mean vector as 0 and a covariance matrix and sigma and they are independent then what is going to be the joint distribution of this this is just stacking of these multivariate normal distribution and hence this is going to be a multivariate normal m n dimension. What would be the mean vector each of the mean vectors are null vector. So, this is going to be a null vector of dimension m n and what is going to be the covariance matrix of this vec of y prime. Now, note that each of these y i's y 1 y 2 y n has covariance matrix sigma. So, this is going to be a matrix which is going to have sigma matrix as its block diagonal matrices and what are the off diagonal matrices. Now, this off diagonal matrix the 1 to 8th position block diagonal matrix would be the covariance matrix between y 1 and y 2. Now, y 1 and y 2 are independent multivariate normal random vectors and hence the covariance will be this null matrices. So, they, these are all null matrices here and we can write that compactly as m n as i n chronica product sigma i n is an identity matrix of order n. So, we have this vec of y prime to follow this. So, we had in the definition of a multivariate uh, matrix normal distribution that we will say that this random matrix y has got a ma matrix normal distribution with these set of parameters if vec of y prime has got this distribution a multivariate normal distribution and hence that is what we have here. So, this would imply that y the random matrix what we had defined as y 1 prime y 2 prime y n prime. So, this was that n by m random matrix this is going to have a matrix normal distribution with a null matrix m here this is taking the place of m there and i n chronica product sigma as the second set of parameters. So, we see that how we actually get a matrix normal distribution from a random sampling through rather a random sampling from a multivariate normal distribution. So, if we have y 1 y 2 y n uh, all multivariate normal 0 sigma they are also independent. Then under such a situation if we frame such a, a matrix y then this matrix y will have a matrix normal distribution with the associated m matrix there as a null matrix and c as i n and d as this sigma the variance covariance matrix of the associated normal distribution. Next time we are going to use this particular result and this definition of matrix normal distribution in order to give an alternate definition of Wishart distribution and derive results of importance. Thank you.